On the 16th of June 1961, a former senior member of the SS, who had committed horrific crimes inside of a concentration camp, was led into the execution chamber of Leipzig Prison for his own date with the executioner. He was a man who had escaped capture immediately after the Second World War, after destroying most of his SS uniforms, and he even went to extreme lengths, cutting out his blood group tattoo, which was on his arm. But it was over 15 years after the Second World War had ended that Wilhelm Schaefer was brought to his execution, and he was a man who was said to have been a torturer, an executioner himself, and a barbaric brute and beast who had no care for the prisoners inside of Buchenwald concentration camp. Join us today as we look at the execution of the SS torturer of Buchenwald, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Wilhelm Schaefer was born on the 20th of October 1911, inside of a farmer's village, and there was little indication of the beast he would one day become. His father held rather strong nationalistic beliefs and ideas, but after his schooling, Schaefer became a bricklayer. However, due to the issues of the 1920s with the economy, Wilhelm Schaefer lost his job, and he then became unemployed, but he found work inside of his town as a farm worker. But in these financial conditions, many people turned to the radical politics, and hundreds of thousands of people turned specifically towards the Nazi party, and Adolf Hitler. Hitler was promising the German people many things, including an end to starvation and struggle across the nation, and he also promised to restore national pride, following the humiliation of the First World War and the Treaty of Versailles. Schaefer joined the Nazi party in 1932, but the following year he went further and he delved into his ideology further and joined the SS. He was involved in much of the brutality of the SS from early on and he would spark violence with rival political groups and he developed a reputation for himself for being a brute. Schaefer then following this in 1935 was first sent to a concentration camp and he served inside of Lichtenborg concentration camp. This was only at the time a small site, but was one of the first camps opened, and inside here most of the prisoners were political prisoners, but the SS guards became notorious for their evil, and they would assault and attack inmates regularly, as they possessed different beliefs to them, and many such as communists were said to have been staunch enemies of the Nazis. Schaefer inside of Lichtenborg was known to have beaten and abused inmates, and he also took part in the killing of inmates, brutalising them. But following his work at Lichtenborg, he was then sent to Buchenwald concentration camp in 1937, and he remained here for six years, through a large chunk of the Second World War. Buchenwald as a concentration camp and imprisonment centre opened years before the Second World War, and to begin with it would hold 8,000 prisoners, but would then grow to a huge extent. The camp was staffed by the SS, with the first commandant, Karl Otto Koch, being actually executed inside of his own camp, as he was sentenced to death for disgracing the SS, and would be shot by a firing squad a week before the Americans liberated the camp. Other evil guards included his wife, Ilse Koch, and other women who regularly administered beatings, and even took lives through hangings and shootings. One guard, Walter Sommer, was known as a hangman, and he even crucified two priests upside down, inside of the nearby forests, where many people were executed. The forests became known as the singing forests for the screams that would be heard as prisoners were tortured there. The thing about Buchenwald was the sheer size of the complex, and there were 136 subcamps that served the main site, and it was a place used for armaments production, making of weapons and other vital military equipment for the German war effort. But as mentioned, Buchenwald was a place where the conditions were truly hellish, as prisoners were kept starved and they were forced to conduct hard labour. There were many illnesses and diseases that swept through the camp, and as the inmates were very weak and suffering, disease claimed a lot of lives. There was an extermination through labour policy, as the inmates had to choose between conducting the work and having a small chance of survival, or execution for not working hard enough. There was also human experimentation used at the camp, and further executions were carried out upon Soviet prisoners of war, who were slaughtered inside of the Genit Schussenlager, the next shooting facility. It's said that 56,545 prisoners, at least, died at Buchenwald, but as the war turned against the Germans following the Normandy landings, there would be some hope for these prisoners. Many of the inmates were evacuated on death marches and transports to other camps, 
and here the SS would execute and shoot anyone who could not keep up and was too slow. Wilhelm Schaefer remained at Buchenwald until 1943, where he took part in much of the horror. He was the deputy commandant of the camp laundry area of the site, but was also a Blockführer, responsible for different detachments of prisoners who were forced to conduct hard labour. He was also part of Commando 99, inside of the camp, who performed many executions, including much of the horrors that occurred inside the next shooting facility, with this group of executioners shooting many thousands of Soviet prisoners of war. He took part in hundreds, if not thousands, of executions, and Schaefer also administered torture at the camp, alongside other beasts such as Martin Sommer, who, as mentioned, became known as the Hangman. Schaefer flogged prisoners in the open many times, and he also punished prisoners using tree hangings, where the victims had their hands tied behind their backs, and they were then suspended by them from behind. This was excruciating, and was so painful, it even resulted in many deaths and executions. But as the Second World War turned against the Germans, and due to a shortage of men, Wilhelm Schaefer was sent to go and fight the enemy in battle, and his unit, the 20th Foffen SS Grenadier Division, conducted many anti-partisan raids. However, when he realised that the war was only going one way, Schaefer made preparations to try and avoid a later war crimes trial. He was a man who knew he would be one day brought to trial for his horrific actions inside of the concentration camps, and he absconded from the front lines. He then cut out his own SS blood tattoo on his arm and burned all of his SS papers and his uniform and he tried to hide out as a civilian. He moved throughout different German regions before he settled in Arnstadt and he wrote to his wife who was in West Germany saying that he did not want to return to her as he believed he would be identified. But he was inside of East Germany and did not necessarily keep a low profile becoming the chairman of the local Peasants' Mutual Aid Association. However, in the 1960s, there was an issue in East Germany. Independent farmers were being pushed to collectivise their farms and lands, and farmers based where Schaefer was did not want to do this, and Schaefer himself was opposed to it. However, one day in 1960, a man knocked on the door of Schaefer's home and tried to get him to join collectivised farming. However, unfortunately for Schaefer, this man was in fact a survivor of Buchenwald, who went cold when he realised who he was, and this man then reported Schaefer to the Stasi, and he was arrested. In 1961, Wilhelm Schaefer was brought to trial, and he was accused of being an accessory to murder, he was accused of crimes against humanity, mass murder, and war crimes, and the case was heard in front of the Supreme Court of East Germany. There was a lot of evidence gathered during the trial, and many witnesses and former prisoners from Buchenwald told the court about Schaefer's World War II conduct inside of the camp. They said he was incredibly brutal, and the prisoners avoided him at all costs, and that he had a habit of executing prisoners when he became bored. But Schaefer would not hide his crimes, and he admitted to executing around 150 Soviet prisoners, and he may have believed that enough time had passed, and that he would be reprieved and would be spared the hangman or the guillotine by admitting some of his crimes but what the court found was much more harrowing. Schaefer was found guilty of brutalising and murdering at Lichtenburg and Buchenwald, and executing 150 prisoners inside the next shooting facility at least, and being involved in the executions of up to more than 1,000 Soviet prisoners of war. He was also found guilty of carrying out 400 floggings, 30 tree hangings, and in raiding partisans during the war as part of the SS, and many of the civilians captured were executed by Schaefer and his SS cronies. He was also guilty of burning down villages and settlements. Because of all of these crimes, Wilhelm Schaefer was condemned to death for his crimes. In West Germany, at the time, a number of Second World War criminals had been released, but it was very different in East Germany, as the Soviet authorities pressed forward with executions. It was said that a life sentence was too lenient because of his horrific crimes they argued that Schaefer was still a danger to people. But he was not allowed to appeal his verdict, and following his trial, he was sent to Leipzig prison, where he sat on death row. On the 16th of June 1961, he was taken from his prison cell, and was marched into the execution chamber of Leipzig prison, where the guillotine was found. During the war and following, the German guillotine, which was known as the Faulbeil, fell upon the heads and necks of many, who were known to have committed atrocities during the conflict. 
In fact, executioners became so swift using the device that they would be able to take a head clean off in a matter of seconds from someone just entering the execution chamber. Wilhelm Schaefer had his identity confirmed and the assistant executioner secured his arms behind his back before he was then secured onto a metal board. This was then tilted onto the guillotine and he was locked into place. The executioner then swiftly released the blade and with this the blade fell and took his head clean off. Wilhelm Schaefer's remains were then cremated. He was one of the most evil and brutal guards of the concentration camp system, but eventually Wilhelm Schaefer paid for his crimes with his head and his life. He was a man who was more than eager to get involved in torture and slaughter inside of Buchenwald, and his actions were etched onto the minds of those who survived the camp, and eventually this would haunt him as he was handed over to the Stasi by a former prisoner. The courtroom was horrified by what Schaefer had done, and his actions were seen as some of the most sadistic of the conflict, and something which the guillotine would try to atone for. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.